Hi and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about asset prices in 2021. So that means the housing market, stock market, crypto market, any of the major assets. I'm going to be talking about that today and where I see prices going this year. So I'm going to start the video by going rogue today and disagreeing with a lot of the world-class economists that I'm seeing on MSM as well as some of the top financial YouTubers that I see as well. I'm, I'm going to be disagreeing with a lot of what they say. I just saw an interview a couple of days ago where one guy, very top finance guy, was saying that he believes we're going to see a 50% drop in the stock market in April this year. So next month in April. I highly disagree with that. I'm also going to disagree with a lot of other people who are predicting a stock market crash in April. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but I am saying that it's highly improbable. And in fact, I would say the polar opposite. Uh, this isn't to take away from my crash videos, the analysis that I've done there, where I've outlined exactly how these crashes will occur, housing market crash, stock market crash, etc. There's no change to those. I still believe a crash is coming. I'm just saying that I believe that the fundamentals right now are very different all to do with this stimulus, especially this new $1.9 trillion stimulus that's now passed. So do I believe there's going to be a stock market crash in April? Absolutely not. I think the odds of that are extremely unlikely. However, there is a caveat to this video, which I'm going to talk about in a short while, because I also think that we could see a new all time high in April. Now, you might be watching this video and saying, wait, wait, Neil, have you lost your mind? Have you gone absolutely nuts today? Haven't you seen the job losses, the unemployment numbers, the homeless on the streets in Los Angeles? Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. What the heck has happened here? What Whoa. the heck? It's on both sides of the road. Yeah, I, I actually did last week. I, I drove through there. Haven't you seen the debt to GDP ratio? Haven't you seen this, the, the PE ratios of stocks, the Buffett indicator? How can you say that we're not going to see a crash anytime soon? And the reason for that is because right now, none of those things, even though they're extremely important and they will cause a crash later on, right now, none of those things, those fundamentals uh, really apply or are important in regards to what's happening in the stock market and what I believe is going to happen in around, I can't give you a precise date, but June or July of this year. And if my models and my forecast is correct, I believe we're going to see more than one trillion US dollars of more liquidity flowing through the central banks. Now, if you want a really accurate number, that would be 1.4 trillion. But I'm just going to go with one trillion because, you know, once you get into these numbers, it really doesn't matter too much. Oh, and did I mention that the commercial banks now have a 0% reserve as well? Yes, 0% reserve for many commercial banks now in the United States. And you've got to ask yourself the question, why is that? Why would people have fought so hard in previous generations to make sure there is a reserve in the commercial banks? And now they have lifted that to say that it can be 0%. You've got to start asking some questions there and looking into what might be the repercussions of that. So if you're an investor watching this today, obviously what I'm saying is very good for you. It's very bullish news in that you're probably going to make a lot more money if you're in the markets, housing, crypto, stock markets, whatever you're in, this is very good news for you. And if I was a betting man, I would probably roll the dice to say that the markets will continue going up right through to the summertime. Now, past the summertime, I can't really say exactly what will happen because I'm not quite sure at this stage. It all depends on the Federal Reserve and the government. So that's their monetary and their fiscal policies. And no one can predict what they're going to do. We all have good guesses and ideas, but no one really knows for sure. But on the flip side of this, if you're just an everyday person in a nine to five job and your biggest concern is bills, food prices, energy bills, etc., I'm here today to say that these are going to go up. Don't believe the lies that you're hearing, 
that we're not seeing any inflation, it's only 1.7% or 2%, it's not true. What they're doing is they're, they're swapping out these products that make up the CPI. They're swapping all these food items for one for one, where some of them are lower priced, etc. This is what they do all the time to manipulate the CPI numbers. So what I'm saying here is not good for you and your grocery bills. And look, I already know, you know, I know, we're not stupid. Look at your grocery bill. You know the prices are going up. It doesn't matter how many media outlets say that prices are the same and that there's no change. You know they're going up. Just like when I filled up my gas tank this week, it wasn't $40, it was almost $75. Now that's a big difference in fuel costs since I was last here in California and filled up my tank. Another lie that's being spread at the moment, especially in the media, is that they are saying, or should I say the economists are saying, that this $1.9 trillion of desperately needed relief, these are the three words they keep uh, using, are going to be going into the hands and to the pockets of people so they can spend that into the economy, and that possibly this may result in some rising prices, but they don't know. Let me just say this, that money, that 1.9 trillion, is not going into the hands of the people. And again, people misinterpret what I say. I 100% support the money going to the people to help people who are in difficult situations right now. So I fully support that. What I don't support is where the rest of the money is going. And, and look, let's just do the maths here. This is not complex. 330 million people in the USA, and not everyone's gonna get a stimulus check, but let's just pretend they did, times $1,400 a person. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's somewhere in the region of $460 billion. So if the stimulus is 1.9 trillion, where's the other 1.4, 1.5 going? Let me just say, it's not all going to the <coughs> relief. Look into it, look into the bill and what was passed. Have a look closely where that money is going. A lot of it is nothing to do with the pandemic. If you're getting some value from this video so far, could you do me a quick favor? Just click the like button below. Just appreciate that so much. And why not subscribe to the channel while you're here? Thank you. Now, coming back to the caveat I mentioned at the start of this video, where I said there wouldn't be a stock market crash. So let me just talk about that a little bit more. The reason for that is because there's so much liquidity, all of this money floating around at the moment, that it has to go somewhere and it has to go through the commercial banks. The banks don't wanna keep all this money on their account, so they wanna uh, loan it out, they wanna get rid of it. So what are they doing? They're doing refinancing, buying a new home. You know, They're trying to help people to get new homes. I don't know a single person, not one single person of my friends that hasn't refinanced their home in the last six to nine months. Not one, not a single person here in the USA who hasn't refinanced their home. And for those people who I'm friends with who are looking for homes, they're all seriously looking, especially with these low rates. So why are these low rates here? Well, where have they come from? They've come from all of this liquidity that's in the market. The banks need to use it, they need to get this liquidity out and working. So while we've got all of this stimulus going around, all of this fresh money, it has to go somewhere and where it goes is into assets. Just look at the crypto market. As I record this video, it's at 1.75 trillion. If you remember when I first started talking about crypto, it was at 500 billion. And you remember I bought in, I said, okay guys, now's the time. This was back in December time, early December. I said, now is the time to get into crypto. I bought into Bitcoin at 18K. I bought a whole basket. I've got more than 30, 40 different cryptocurrencies. And that's why, because I knew all of this liquidity was gonna be going into these markets. And an example of how crazy it is, I just checked one of my cryptos today called T-Fuel, so it's Theta Fuel. It's up over 1,000% just since December. Some of the others are up 300, 400, 500%. So you've got to start asking the question here, are these cryptos and are the houses and are the stocks going up because their value is rising or are they going up because there's simply nowhere else for all of this liquidity to go? But even if any of the markets crash, which they possibly could because 
remember the markets are emotional so they can crash at any time because it's human beings but even if they do crash I do believe we'll see something similar to what we saw last year in February and March time where the market went down but then recovered again very quickly. So a lot of investors lost their money last year because they, they sold when the market goes down. Never do that, by the way. But at the same time, a lot of investors made a lot of money because they bought that dip. But let me just be clear, this is the greatest wealth transfer that I have ever seen from studying history. Nothing else compares to what I'm seeing right now in the markets. So overall, I'm not expecting any form of a crash in the markets, any of these markets, until they stop all of this stimulus. And right now, I can't tell you when that's gonna happen. And just look at the government spending. A healthy government is not spending 45% of the GDP into the economy. And that's just what they're admitting to. They could even be spending a lot more. But I still do stand by my forecast that we are going to see high inflation as we move forward this year and next year. And this is because we have the data to show that inflation doesn't hit right away. It's often 12, 18 months behind when the new currency is created. And of course, we have all the modern monetary theorists who tend to work in the government and the Fed and et cetera, they're everywhere, who are saying that we're not gonna see high inflation this time and it's gonna be very low. Now, the reason that I disagree with that is because they're basing it on previous crises like this, the 2000 crisis, the 2008 crisis, but these are completely different. If you look at what happened then with the quantitative easing, all of the money and all of the bailout money went straight to the big institutions and to the banks. This time around, yes, they are getting the money, but there's also money going directly to the people, into the hands of the people. So when the money goes into the hands of the people, the people spend it into the economy. And when you have the goods and services, uh, and actually what we're seeing is a lot of businesses have closed down or collapsed. So you're now seeing more money with, with the people being spent in less businesses in the economy. So I think we're gonna see some price rises. And I know that most people disagree with me on this, but I really do believe that over the next 12 to 18 months, we are going to start to see some quite severe price rises. And finally, my closing point is don't get caught out by the Fed lies. These people will say whatever they need to say to feather their own nests. Just remember that. So just because Jerome Powell says that they're not gonna raise interest rates for years to come, it doesn't mean that that's true. If inflation starts to rise out of control, because as the expression goes, once you let the inflation genie out the bottle, you can't put it back in, they will really only have one option to control inflation, and that is to raise interest rates. There really isn't anything else that can be done at this stage. So although I'm you know, going along with the Fed forecast that they're not gonna raise interest rates for a number of years to come, I wouldn't put all your eggs in that one basket because if inflation does start to run away, then I do believe that they will go back on their word and they will raise interest rates without a second thought. So thank you so much for watching this video today. Please click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for being online. Thank you for watching all my videos. Uh, until next time, thank you. Take care. God bless.